E is bigger than B plus D. If E is bigger than B plus D, the two uh, uh, that we lost. Kurge luput. If E is bigger than uh, B and D, national welfare is increased. If E equals B and D, uh, break even. National welfare remains constant. If E, terms of three effect, is less than B and D, national welfare diminished. So, when if you ask, uh, in the case of small nation, small country, uh, tariff, the impact of tariff, is it welfare increasing or welfare decreasing? Definitely, you will answer. Tariff will reduce welfare. Small country. Tariff will reduce welfare. Small country. But with a large country or large nation, uh, it depends. It depends on what? Whether E is bigger than B plus D, the two dead weight losses. Dua keruga luput itu. Sama ada kesan kadar syarat perdagangan itu, E lebih besar daripada dua keruga luput itu. So, depends on the case. Bigger, the same, or less. Okay, now, done with that. I think that's the most important thing in this chapter. The case of tariff in small nation, the case of tariff in large nation, and now the rest is a reading. So let me skip on that. Okay, optimum tariff and retaliation. Optimum tariff maximizes positive difference between gain of improving terms of trade area E and loss in economy efficiency from the protective effect area B and D. So you want to maximize, so that's optimum tariff. To maximize the difference, the positive difference between E compared with B and D, uh, the two dead weight losses. This is the terms of trade effect. Only very beneficial to importing nation. Uh, so beggar the nation, uh, neighbor policy, this uh, could invite retaliation from other countries if you uh, try to implement optimum tariff to increase more and more this will uh, uh, invite retaliation okay I want to skip on that so now how a tariff burdens exporters Effects of import tariffs on exporters. So, we're asking the burden on exporters. Okay? Uh, because tariff give protection to the uh, companies uh, producing uh, in the country. But what happened to the exporters? Higher production cost from imported inputs and reduction in consumer surplus can result in higher prices and depending on elasticity of demand, reduce overseas sale. This will raise cost of living, tariff. Tariff, of course, we know tariff will reduce consumer surplus. Tariff also uh, raise cost of living. Uh, inter international repercussions lead to reduction in domestic exports. Uh, 
tariff will invite retaliation. Okay, one. The second one is that tariff uh, will uh, make uh, products from other countries not easily coming to your country, thus reducing income of the, those countries. And then when their income are lower, the incomes are lower, you cannot sell your products to them. Tariffs and the poor. So what happens if uh, tariff is regressive? Tariffs are actually having unequal uh, impacts on the poor and the rich. So impose most severe cost on low-income families. Uh, tariffs, this type of tariff tends to be regressive. Higher tariffs imposed on cheap goods than on luxuries affect different countries in different ways, tend to burden countries or poor countries that specialize in production and sale of cheaper goods. That's why we have unequal um, income throughout the world. One other reason. There are many, many other reasons. Now, argument for Tariff. We're repeating. Let me repeat. Free trade is the best. Free trade agreement. If each nation produces what it does best and permits trade, in the long run, there will be lower prices and higher levels of output and income and consumption. And the whole uh, world will uh, prosper. That's free trade argument. So why countries or uh, people or certain quarters in the, in the country uh, is arguing for the implementation of tariff or protection? One is job protection argument. So job gains less visible than job losses. Actually, what happened? They want to protect jobs because of uh, the, 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 the contents uh, because of imports coming, so we are losing jobs. Actually, job gains from that protection less visible than job losses. Uh, trade restrictions, uh, restrictions result in job gains for a few industries. However, but on the other hand, job losses are spread out throughout the uh, economy. Saved jobs, the jobs that saved uh, cost more than the workers' salary. So, uh, meaning that saving jobs through protection uh, actually incurs uh, loss of welfare, bigger for that country compared with there are few jobs there that are saved. So protection against cheap labor, low wages abroad makes it hard for U.S. firms to compete with firms using cheap la foreign labor. Fails to recognize links among efficiency, wages, and production costs. Low wages do not guarantee low cost. Low wage nations have competitive advantage only in goods requiring greater labor and few other factors. So let be it. That's the free trade. I mean, uh, the, 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 those countries that have uh, labor, uh, more labor, specialize in labor intensive uh, products. Whereas uh, countries having more capital uh, specialize in uh, capital intensive products and they trade. Yes. Uh, so, I'm going to skip. Another argument is fairness in trade. So, so called to have a level playing field. Padang permainan yang rata. 
supaya adil. Domestic producers say imports restrictions need to offset foreign advantages to create level playing field. The rationale for restrictions is that foreign governments play by different rules, giving foreign firms unfair competitive advantage. Uh, trade benefits domestic economy even if foreign nations impose trade uh, restrictions. Fair trade argument overlooks potential impacts of trade restriction on global trade. So, because protection will reduce trade and therefore will reduce uh, welfare of the world. Another argument is maintenance of the domestic standards of living. Advocates of trade barriers often contend tariffs are useful in maintaining high level of income and employment in home nation. However, one nation imposes a tariff that improves its income and employment at the expense of its trading uh, countries. So, beggar thy neighbor policy is not good. Ms. Park retaliated Tory tariffs, retaliation, resulting in lower level of welfare for all nations. So, protection will reduce trade and therefore will reduce welfare of the world. Next is uh, equalization of production cost. So, that's what we call scientific tariff to eliminate unfair competition from abroad. So they calculate, scientifically calculate, mathematically, so we call it scientific tariff. The problems, different costs, there are different costs across businesses, uh, higher domestic prices, benefit this will benefit efficient domestic companies, domestic uh, consumers end up subsidizing inefficient production. So, because consumer uh, loses, right? Uh, loss of welfare, consumer surplus. Scientific tariff approximates prohibitive tariff. Uh, what happens if scientific tariff uh, goes up almost to become prohibitive? Demand, supply. This is a uh, free trade. Hmm. SD, ROW, SD, ROW plus T. What happened if nearly prohibitive? Yes, this is prohibitive tariff because there is no tariff. And no trade anymore. So that's why I call prohibitive tariff. Okay. Completely contradicts notion of competitive advantage and eliminates the basis uh, or the gains from free trade. Next one is infant industry argument, uh, new industry. Trading nations temporarily shield newly developing industries from foreign competition. If protective tariff imposed, difficult to remove. This is what happened. Because special interest groups will try to convince the government that protection is needed. Always needed and, and, and needed and needed. So it's not easy to remove. Uh, difficult to determine which industries will realize comparative advantage in the long run. Uh, not valid for mature industrialized nations. Alternative providing domestic. The alternative is uh, rather than uh, uh, giving protection, we should rather give subsidy to the uh, domestic producer that's been uh, identified that should grow. So 
giving the production subsidy. Uh, in next chapter, we're going to see the difference between, we're going to learn about the difference between protection uh, and subsidy. Subsidy, when is it effective? If uh, want, you want to produce more, subsidy, uh, uh, production subsidy is more effective than uh, uh, protection from imports. That's in the next chapter. Non economic arguments, national security, uh, cultural, assumption that national and individual welfare uh, will be enhanced by tariff. They are wrong. This is wrong assumption. Free trade is the best. That's the theory. Uh, would a tariff war really protect US jobs? Mm, trade protection. Trade protectionism, political priority in 2016 presidential election. Tariffs on imported steel tend to have a positive direct effect on jobs for American steel workers, but can have less visible indirect effects on others. So others other will suffer. So tariff rated gains for Americans is a complex issue. So There are two sides of the coin. Protection bias sector, and those are import competing producers. Free traders, they are exporting producers. So, talk of war. Tarik tali. Now, supply and demand of protectionism. Supply, the government giving. Demand, the demand from the uh, industries. Through protectionism, uh, sorry, though protectionism provides benefits to domestic producers, society as a whole pays the cost, uh, reducing welfare. Losses of consumer surplus because of higher prices, resulting in dead weight losses, Loss of economies of scale, lost economies of scale as further opportunities are lost. Loss of incentive for technological development provided by import competition. Because there, if there is more competition, uh, companies will be forced to innovate. The higher the cost of protection, the less likely a government is to shield an industry from import competition. Supply protectionism increases depending on political importance of import competing uh, industry. For example, if a country, uh, for that country, uh, electronics is very important for the economy. So, uh, companies in the electronic sectors and also workers in the electronic sectors uh, will demand the government, or oh, this is the supply. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the supply. Uh, wait for the demand. Uh, political importance of that important uh, industry. So, if that industry is very important for that country, the government wants to, to give protection. So that's the supply. Whether domestic firms and workers face large costs of adjusting to rising import competition, they want to give it. Uh, public sympathy for a group of domestic uh, businesses or workers. This will increase the supply of uh, protectionism or protection by the government. Now the demand, yes. Come to the demand. Demand for protection rises with intensification of domestic industries comparative disadvantage. Second, higher levels of import penetration in the country, so uh, the industries are demanding the government to, to, to give protection. Concentration of domestic production, uh, this is the one that I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, when I'm in a big state, there was uh, supply, now the demand. 
when uh, that certain industry is very important for that country, there's high concentration of uh, 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 the economy, high concentration in that industry, so uh, they will demand uh, uh, protection. Con concentration of domestic production, so they will demand for more protection. Degree of export dependence, so uh, there is more demand for protection. That's it. So, uh, as a conclusion, uh, we've learned tonight, uh, number one, free trade is good, the best. However, why certain countries, I mean, uh, why there is there are, uh, prot uh, protection? Where, why countries impose or implement protection? We've just learned about the supply and the demand for protection, but uh, protection will incur losses for the welfare of that country. We've learned tonight, uh, in the case of small nation, definitely uh, tariff, one of the protection tariff, when we talk about protection, we have tariff, quota, uh, so we call it tariff protection, and the rest is non-tariff. So with tariff, we know uh, for sure in small nation, there will be a decrease in welfare. So tariff will decrease welfare in a small nation. What about in large nation? It depends. Depends on the E, which is the uh, uh, terms of trade effect. Whether that terms of trade effect is bigger than the two uh, dead weight losses, B and D. If it's bigger, the E, which is uh, uh, coming from another country, other countries, uh, that E, if it's bigger than B and D, so that will increase welfare in that uh, large nation. If E is equal to B and D, so no changes. If E is less than B and D, so there will be decreasing in welfare. So overall, uh, Free trade is best. So thank you very much for watching. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.